I showed in another video that the derivative of f of x can be defined as f prime of x, which is the limit as h approaches zero, of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And we get that again from taking the limit of the slope formula from, that we learned from algebra. Now, a question that we didn't think about at the time was, does f prime exist always for all functions? Does a derivative always exist? And the answer to this question is no. Okay, so I'll show you a very common example that shows that there's no derivative at a certain point. And then we'll talk a little bit more about differentiability and where do derivatives exist. So as an interesting example in the existence of a derivative, let's consider the absolute value of x. Now you may remember, or you may have seen, that the absolute value of x can be defined as uh, x if x is greater than 0 or equal to. So if I plug in something positive, like positive 6, the absolute value of positive 6 is just 6. But if x is less than 0, so if I plug in negative 6, then what I need then for absolute value is a negative negative 6. All right, so the absolute value of x can be defined in this way. So if I'm thinking about the derivative then, if I take the limit as h approaches 0 of the absolute value of x plus h minus the absolute value of x all over h. Okay, if here, if um, x is greater than or equal to 0, or let's just do strictly greater than 0. If x is greater than 0, then this limit is simply, well, you can just drop the absolute values because they're positive. And so I end up with uh, x plus h minus x over h, which ends up being h over h, which just gives me 1. Okay, now if we consider when x is negative, then this expression, the absolute value of x plus h minus uh, the absolute value of x, well, we remember for positive, I mean for negative values, that's a negative, all of this stuff. So I have a negative x plus h minus a negative x, which actually ends up being the, the x is canceled, but, but since I have to distribute that negative, I end up with a negative h over h, which gives me negative 1. So um, one way we could say this, then, is the limit as h approaches 0 from the right becomes positive 1. And when I'm approaching 0 from the left, I get negative 1. Okay, so we remember, then, since the limit as h approaches 0 from the left of this expression, does not equal the limit as h approaches 0 from the right, we know the limit does not exist at 0. Okay, so what that means is absolute value of x has no derivative of 0. So absolute value of x has no, no derivative at 0. Why is that? Well, if you look at the graph at the absolute value of x, you have a v shape that meets right at 0. And so on the right-hand side, this v-shape has a slope of positive 1. On the left-hand side, this v-shape has a slope of negative 1. So right at 0, then, the slope, the slope uh, doesn't trend towards anything. It trends to two different things. If you graph the derivative of this guy, what we have, then, is... Um, where it's a solid 1 on the right-hand side and a solid negative 1 on the left-hand side. And so at 0, there's no, there's no value. So now that we've seen that the absolute value of x does not have a derivative at 0, it's worth mentioning a certain term. If 
I say a function is differentiable, that means, so let's say div differentiable at x equals a, means that f prime of a exists. That's all we mean. If it's differentiable at x equals a, the f prime of a exists. Okay, now a condition on that is continuity. So we can say, If f is differentiable at x equals a, then what we know for sure is that f is continuous at x equals a. Now logically, that does not imply that just because a function is continuous, then it's differentiable. We saw that with the absolute value of x. The absolute value of x is continuous everywhere, but it doesn't have a derivative at zero. So you can think about this in terms of set theory. Here we have the set of all continuous functions. But here we have a set of differentiable functions. And so there are examples, for example, the absolute value of x, of functions that are continuous at a given point, but not differentiable at that point. So can we characterize exactly when a function has no derivative? The answer is yes. So these are the kind of things you can look out for in a graph. If you have cusps or corners, these sharp points, then you have no derivative at that sharp point. We saw that with the absolute value of x. We also know that for a function to have a derivative, it has to be continuous. So if you have a discontinuity, like we have this jump discontinuity here, there's no derivative at that point either. And the third thing is, if you have a vertical tangent line, like we have here, then there's no derivative at that point either. And these are the three cases to look out for in a function graph, where you can quickly notice where there's no derivative. I hope this makes sense. If you need any help, please let me know. I'd be glad to help. Thanks for watching.